Hi everybody, this is Lamkin, and today we're going to be talking about parries. Now, down in the comment section and down in the bottom scroller thing of the video, there's going to be some timestamps. Uh, I'm going to start up uh, poss possibly today by doing a little bit of a rant. I'm going to be talking about uh, parries, what are parries, how do they work, and what are they useful for, and what changed from Tekken 8 to, or sorry, from Tekken 7 to Tekken 8, because there have been some dramatic nerfs to parries and some uh, changes to parries in this uh, new system. And then we're going to be going through some uh, different options. We're going to be focusing on law today. Uh, but there are a bunch of different parries in the game. I'm going to mention some of them briefly. But uh, yeah, let's uh, just get right into it. So first of all, what is a parry? Uh, well, a parry is basically a defensive move that will allow you to disarm your opponent's attack and steal back your turn or uh, do it like a reversal attack on them. Something like this or something like this. Now those were two different examples of uh, parries and we'll go over them in a bit. That's basically what parries are. Now there are a bunch of different parries. This this one you just saw is a, a punch parry and this is what co what's called a manual parry. Now Law's punch parry, uh, as the name in, uh, implies, it will only parry punches. It won't uh, parry kicks or uh, anything like that. Um, and the manual parries, they will uh, parry punches and kicks, but they won't parry uh, elbows and knees and uh, hip strikes or shoulder attacks and headbutts and all that kind of stuff. Um, and there's a lot of different parries and reversals in this game. Uh, most characters have a, uh, some version of a punch parry uh, and some characters have uh, a manual parry. That would be, for example, uh, Paul has a manual parry, Nina has a manual parry, there's a bunch of different ones. And then like Kasuya, for example, has a punch parry, Feng has a punch parry, and uh, he has another special parry and then there's, there's a couple like specialized ones like uh, Jin has a parry that can actually parry knees and elbows and pretty much everything right same with Leroy he has a special parry he has a bunch of different parries and uh, sabakis inbuilt in some of his attacks and um, so uh, there are some exceptions to that rule but generally uh, uh, characters has either a punch parry or manual parry or sometimes both or a sabaki and something like that um, but the focus of today's video is going to be uh, law because this is kind of like a law specific channel and it's the character that I kind of like specialize in. Um, so yeah, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about law's parries. Um, so law, uh, again he has a punch parry, this one. And this one does gain some special properties when, when you're in heat because this acts as a auto parry whenever you're in DSS in heat. Meaning that, uh, oh yeah, so uh, in case I didn't mention it, the, the input for this parry is back 2 plus 4, like this. Uh, but whenever you're in heat and whenever you're in DSS, this will come out automatically. So you'll notice that uh, in DSS you can loop DSS 1, as he will, after DSS 1, he'll automatically go into DSS again. If you notice, like, my input display, I'm just spamming 1 while in DSS, and he goes automatically into DSS again. And Whenever you are in DSS, uh, the auto parry is active here. See, I'm not pressing anything here, it's just automatically uh, parrying. Another thing that's pretty cool about this is whenever you do this uh, this punch parry in DSS, you will actually replenish some of your heat meter. No notice how the heat meter increases. So this has some pretty cool implications in certain matchups, like for example Steve, who is a character who has like almost only like punches. He does have a few kicks, he does have uh, some uh, elbows in Tekken 8 that he didn't have in Tekken 7, so he does have, there is a ways around it. But if you want to see like how this can be implemented in a real fight, in the comment section uh, I will throw a, oh sorry, in the description I will put a link to a video where I kind of showcase this in a real fight against a Steve player. Now this is not something I would necessarily recommend trying to abuse uh, in, a, in a Steve matchup or anything, because if a Steve player he will just start uh, grabbing you while you're in DSS. Or start like uh, do, doing lows, or he will try and walk around you to get you in the back where the parry doesn't work. So it's not something that's like uh, uh, like crazy OP and that you can just uh, abuse endlessly. But it does have some some, some cool niche uh, uses. Then there's the manual parry, and the manual parry is back 1 plus 3. Let me see. 
like this and it will put you at plus seven but the cool thing about this law of manual parry is that you can actually enter dss from this uh, parry right here by holding forward after doing the uh, parry like this now if you're paying close attention to my inputs in this uh, uh, video today you'll probably see me doing the the old dss input <laughs> but know that you can just hold forward here and he'll go into dss now it, it will say plus 24 uh, but it's not actually plus 24. Uh, you are, in theory, plus 14. So anything that is uh, comes out of 14 frames or faster, so like DSS uh, neutral 2 or DSS forward 1, it will connect. You, it is guaranteed. And this is with the exception of 3 plus 4, 4. 3 plus 4, 4 comes out at 14, but it is not guaranteed here. This was a thing back in Season 1 and 2 in Tekken 7, but it was removed later in Tekken 7 because it was too strong. 3 plus 4 4 was a launcher in Tekken 7 and the ability to to parry while being minus uh, 7 uh, <laughs> and, and going straight into a launcher was a bit too OP in, to, uh, in that game and arguably it's a good thing that it's still not in this game because 3 plus 4 4 in and of itself it does a lot more damage in this game and it does wall splat still uh, reliably and Wall, wall, wall combos are buffed in this game as well, so it's probably a good thing that uh, 3 plus 4 4 is not guaranteed anymore, but you do get some really cool options um, here. So, for example, with the most useful uh, things are arguably... Um, so, like, you do get a guaranteed DSS 1, but I don't know why you, you would ever do that. Same with the uh, DSS 4 2, there's no reason really to do that. What you want to go for here is either uh, DSS uh, neutral 2, which also gives you, allows you to run up and nunchuck them. Or DSS uh, forward one. This is where the, the manual parry really shines, because if you're in DS, uh, sorry, if you're in heat already, you, you might have figured out already that this is actually a launcher. You see? Oh. So yeah, really, really strong parry. Now uh, let's let's go over some of the differences from Tekken 7 to Tekken 8. So parries overall, especially the manual parries, they saw a lot of nerfs uh, in this game. So first of all, in 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 Tekken 8, uh, you, all, you all, I've already explained how you cannot parry like punches and kick. Uh, like you, sorry, you cannot with the manual parry. You cannot uh, parry knees and elbows and headbutts and hip strikes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but also in Tekken 8, you cannot parry any sort of airborne attack. Uh, whereas in Tekken 7, you could actually parry uh, some uh, airborne attacks. Uh, most of them you couldn't, but you could actually parry hop kicks in Tekken 7. So, for example, uh, Claudio's hop kick or Law's hop kick, uh, Lay's hop kick, whatever. Uh, if it's a kick, you could parry it in Tekken 7, even though it was uh, airborne like that. Uh, unless it's like Lee or Yoshimitsu or King, like someone who has a knee as a hop kick, then obviously that still wouldn't work. But in this game, you just straight up cannot parry any sort of airborne move. It's completely removed. Also, in Tekken 7, you can parry charged up attacks. Now, there weren't that many charged up attacks in Tekken 7 compared to this game. This is something they, they added a lot more of in Tekken 8. Uh, for example, pause down to, to hold 2, I think it is might be mistaken uh brian's uh, new wall breaker thing whatever his wall splat uh, charge up there's a lot of different charge ups in this game that gives uh, a block break or guard breaks right and uh, the non-charged versions of those attacks you can usually parry but if they are charged up uh, moves in this game you just straight up cannot parry them and a lot of uh, moves that are heat engagers you cannot parry as well so for example um uh, what's it called? Reina's forward forward two into uh, what is it? Sentai free, the the one where she spins around, right? No, that's not Sentai. Whatever, the one where she spins around, the, the homing uh, kick she does out of that stance, right? Uh, it, just, it seems to reason that that should be uh, parryable, but it's just straight up not because that would be too strong for parries if it if it was, I guess. So that is not parried uh, parryable, uh, and likewise a lot of heat engagers, even though they are punches and kicks, they are not uh, parryable, and some of them are, so it's really confusing right now. Um, but 
some of the biggest nerves Pe Manuel Perrys have seen in this game is, first of all, the active frame win window has been reduced, and the startup frames have ha has been increased, meaning that the window, the act the active window that you have to time your parry is now uh, smaller, so you have to be more precise landing your parries, and the startup is slower, meaning that. Uh, you don't have as much time, like the time, or in other words, the amount of frames it takes fr from when you press the buttons till you uh, the parry be uh, becomes active on screen and uh, has working properties, right, is uh, increased, so it, it comes out slower again. Um, meaning that there are certain things that you just straight up can't do anymore. Uh, a lot of situations in Tekken 7 where the the manual parry might be the best option you have, or in, indeed maybe the only option you have in such, certain situations. And there still are situations like that in Tekken 8, and we're going to go over some of them today, uh, but they are far, 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 far less in this game than they were in Tekken 7. So for example, I'll show you what I mean here. In Tekken 7, you could you would be able to parry someone off a jab, the fastest move in the game, if you were at minus seven, but that's not possible in this game anymore because of the nerf to the startup frame of parries. So if you've seen me play in Tekken 7, you'll sometimes see me do like back four into parry. This this doesn't work anymore. You can see on my input display I'm inputting the manual parry, but it uh, even though I'm minus seven here, it doesn't work anymore. You have to be you cannot be more than minus five in this game if you want to have the time to input a, a manual parry. Uh, so that ma this makes it so that uh, there's a lot of situations where you could parry before, uh, before, but in this uh, game there's just no options at all. So for one of these examples would be like, for example, uh, uh, Cassius one, two, four, three. You probably know this string, right? The one where he does two highs, then a low and a mid kick. Um, this the, in Tekken Seven, if you fail to like normally you would low parry the low preferably or. Uh, uh, but if you if you don't low parry it or block it, you cannot step the last hit, so you're forced to blocking that. But in Tekken 7, if you have a manual parry, and if you somehow fail to low parry the low kick, the third hit, you can still manual parry the the last kick. But that's not possible in 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 Tekken 8 because you just don't have the frames anymore. Um, so yeah, parries have, have seen a lot of uh, nerves, unfortunately, in this game. But they still have their uses, and uh, let's go su through some of them. All right. So one way that parries uh, still might be useful is that uh, when you have a read on people, um, and in most situations, when you have a hard read and you want to commit to a read, parry most uh, definitely won't be uh, your first option or your your best option necessarily. For example, uh, a lot of arena uh, players they have this habit where they want to like forward four and then. Uh, uh, do a down forward one, down forward one two. Now in this situation, of course, down forward one two is like minus fourteen, right? So the best thing here would just be to take the take it and then uh, block punish, right? But what a lot of what a lot of uh, Rainer players will do is uh, they will like uh, they will, and they won't commit to, to to it, right? They will just uh, let's. Uh, They'll they'll just do something. Uh, they'll do something like this, like down down. Uh, they'll just do the down forward one, right? Forward four, down forward one, down forward one, and then down forward one two. Something like that, right? That's how they will they will pressure you. But if 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 they always uh, run up to you, like after uh, in an okay situation, if a rain player always does like uh, uh, forward four, down down forward one. Like you can, you can just uh, you 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 could just step it right like that. You have to be a little bit faster, yeah, maybe. There you go, like you get a launcher. But this is uh, this becomes a little bit uh, more uh, complicated if you're on the player two side because this has the tracking to uh, the right but not to the left. Um, so if we let's see, let's switch some positions here real quick. We see that now on player two side, because I'm I'm forced into cr I'm forced into crouch here, and when you're forced into crouch, it's not possible to step uh, on player two side. It's not possible to step uh, to the left. So on this side, this is right and this is left. Uh, but since I can't step to the left here, and this move has to be stepped to the left, I can only step right. It means that I, I no longer have the option to step and and launch her. You see. It's, at 
least it's very unreliable, right? See, if, I, if I'm at tip range, it seems like it, it, it does work. But if I'm anywhere close to her, as I will be in an Oki situation, right? I cannot step it. So it would be quite unreliable on player 2 side, for example, to try and step this. You'd have to confirm, like visually confirm, that you're at tip range. So in this situation, a parry might be better. If you have a read, of course. And you could do, do the manual parry, you could do the punch parries, whatever. This is the option you have. Or a, b a better option you have in this situation. So that's, that's, that's one situation where uh, parries are still uh, quite useful. If you have a read and uh, there's no other options really, if you cannot step uh, or anything, if you cannot step or duck, a parry might be your best option in a situation like that. And this is uh, just an example of one. Now another situation where the parries can be quite uh, useful is with people who jab check you constantly. So this is very typical of uh, Mishima players like uh, Reynas and uh, Devil Jins, Kasiyas, uh, stuff like that right so a lot of the, those players especially a low rank they will try and they'll like autopilot you in a way that they will try and jab check you every time you're like slightly minus they will try and one one jab you to, like this right you you've probably seen this in action a lot of players like to do that so what, what you can do uh, against a strat like that well obviously first of all you want to probably just uh, duck and launch them right or you could step and launch that'll be your best options but when when you ha when you have uh, people who uh, they will jab check, they will sometimes do like a homing or a tracking move, whatever. Right? If you're not sure about the read, or if you want to take less risk, maybe uh, you could you could do a parry, because the parry. So so like if, the danger is that if you try and step and they and they do a homing move, like uh, if you tr if you try and step law and he does a back four, then you will get hit. But if you if you do a if you, if you do a parry in that same situation, you'll just parry the back four because the parries do, the parries don't care about tracking and homing and all that kind of stuff. So in that sense, you could be taking less of a risk. In a kill situation, I would m maybe go for a parry instead of a like a duck or a step. Depends on like the nature of your read, I guess. But in a situation where I would almost definitely always go for the parry. Let's uh, see here. It's, it's when when at the wall, for example, I could I could do something like. Uh, one to three into parry. If I know they're gonna jab check or something, and then I get a wall uh, combo like this, right? Because uh, DSS uh, neutral two is guaranteed after my manual parry, and it wall splats. So in this situation, I probably want to do that. Uh, it, it's a it's a little bit quote unquote safer than doing a step or a duck. If you duck uh, and they do like a hop kick or something, you, you get launched. If uh, same same could be if, uh, if you step and you get caught by a move, right? But if you parry, of course you can get launched while you parry as well. But the the parry covers more options, is what I'm trying to say. And in this situation, you still get quite a big reward from parrying them. You get the wall splat, right? And a huge wall combo. Whatever you want to do. So that's that's another situation where. Uh, parries and specifically again the manual parry uh, uh, would be quite useful all right so let's talk about some some character specific or some matchup specific uh, parry options so for example we have Elisa here she has a move that's uh, called forward uh, forward three four four it's this one now this is a very annoying move because uh, now it is it is minus 10 for her so you, you get a you get a 10 frame punish in this game but it doesn't stop a lot of uh, Lisa player from uh, abusing this. And it can be pretty hard to deal with also because the second hit, although you see the second hit is a high, it is uh, it jails. So you can see I I'm trying to duck it after the first hit, but it just doesn't work. Because this jails and of course it tracks to both sides, so you, you cannot uh, step the last hit. Or what you can do, if you're not... Uh, if you don't wanna... If you wanna get something a little bit more than a 10 frame punish, you can just... Uh, you can just parry her. Manual parry the last hit of this string right here. So of course you get a launcher if you're in heat, you get a heat engager if you're not in heat. If you're at an angle where you can get the wall, you get the wall flat with the DSS2 right here, right? Otherwise you'll just get OP. This is 
uh, much better than getting a 10 frame punish, that's for sure. Now King, he has this uh, very annoying move, up 1 plus 2. It's a great uh, gap closer. A lot of King players will throw this out in a neutral to uh, close the distance on you, get gain frame advantage on block, or uh, get a combo on hit, right? Um, so this move is, uh, it is, uh, you can sidewalk it to either side, it's uh, quite li linear, uh, but it comes out quite fast as well. Uh, so this can be very hard to visually confirm this animation and then trying to step it. You see, what happens if I try to visually confirm it and then step, it, it will track to, to both sides. Now it's not impossible, you see, it, it can, uh, but you have to be so fast, like very early in the uh, animation, you have to recognize this and, ste and step it at the perfect time. So, uh, mostly you won't be able to step this. Uh, but what you can do in this situation, if, if you have quite fast reflexes, is you can still carry this. So, this this looks like one of those moves that, that are airborne, but once the move connects, he's not airborne anymore. He's, uh, he's on the ground, so this is actually carryable. Now, this is one of those situations where if you're anticipating, if you got a read, if you're anticipating he's gonna do it, then you, you're better off stepping, of course. But if, if you just straight up have great reflexes, uh, you, 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 can, you can still uh, visually confirm and parry this pretty much every time. Again, uh, this probably does require that you, that you have a great connection uh, and that you have great reflexes. But this is, uh, in my opinion, more reliable than stepping it, at least stepping it on reaction, that would be. Now you just have to keep in mind, as I mentioned already, that the charged up version of this uh, move uh, you, you could parry this in Tekken 7, but you cannot parry this. You cannot parry this in Tekken 8 anymore. It is not possible. So keep that in mind. Alright, let's look at, a, uh, at an example from Lily real quick. So Lily, she has this super annoying string called free, forward 3 plus 4, uh, 3, 4. This one right here. Now this one is minus 20, but if you notice uh, the pushback, it makes it pretty much impossible to punish this. Like, the last 3 plus 4 4 is one of the best 14 frame punishes in the game, but as you can see, this is not a punish. You can block this, uh, because uh, the pushbacks, it's almost impossible to, to punish this. So, uh, a lot of Lily players that will abuse this uh, a lot. Uh, you, you probably dealt with this move and found it pretty frustrating. And this is also due to the fact that it has so much tracking. See, the, sec the second hit here, it, it tracks uh, amazingly to both sides. Both to the left and to the right. Now, it is possible to step it to the right, but you have, you have to step like as soon as uh, the first hit connects pretty much. See, and even if you do, you will still get clipped by the third hit. See, I can try and punish here. I cannot get the down forward 2 here. It is extremely hard. See, it is possible, but just extremely difficult. Most likely, you are going to get clipped by this. See what I mean? Uh, but what you can do, if you notice, this, the second hit of this string has a long wind up until it will uh, connect with you. That's like a big delay, and you can use this to visually confirm it and then parry it uh, with the manual parry and get out of this situation for free. Provided you have the the, the knowledge of this and the, the reflexes uh, to execute it, of course. This is, this is one uh, effective way of dealing with, the, with, the, with that string that would otherwise uh, be very uh, annoying. Alright, now Feng is a character that ha also has like multiple annoying strings uh, to deal with. So, for example, one of them could be this uh, down, down back uh, 2 2 2 right here. This is uh, safe on block at uh, only minus 8. And if, if you get hit, uh, if you get hit by the first hit, you can you still have time to to block the second hit, right? And then the the third hit as well. But you'll and uh, you'll be plus eight. Of course, you'll get your turn. But it's a, it's a safe, a pretty safe move right here. It can be annoying to deal with, and you cannot step it to either. It, tra it tracks to to both sides. Let me, let me show here. Uh, let's see. If I step uh, left, it doesn't work. And if I try, 
try on the other side, step to the right. Because I'm in crouch here, right? It doesn't work, it, it tracks to both sides. Yes, but what you can do here is if you block the second hit. Now, if you block the first hit, you can just low parry the second hit, right? I'll be the preferable situation, but in a lot of situations you'll find yourself in, you'll block the, uh, the second hit, you get hit by the first one, you'll block the second hit, and you'll take the, the last hit, and you'll take your turn, right? But you can get guaranteed damage if he finishes this string, of course, uh, by uh, parrying it. Like this. There you go. And because this is a punch, of course you can also use a punch parry. Although I would recommend doing manual parry overall, because you get the heat uh, engager, you get the heat uh, dash combo, you get the wall splat with the DSS2, right? This is one uh, way you can deal with this string. Similarly, he has another string. Uh, let's see. This one right here. Now this is not a natural string after the low. You can block. You can block everything here. Now again, uh, preferably you want to just uh, low parry the low, right? You get your your low parry combo. Uh, but if you fail to block the low here, you 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 are kind of a. Uh, um, in a bad spot because you, you cannot now again it's safe on block you are plus, plus six forge uh, forced uh, here uh, but you cannot step this uh, last hit to either direction it tracks to both directions but you can parry it and because it's a punch you can use the punch parry but again I would recommend just a manual parrying this Again, preferably you want to low parry this uh, string, but if you fail to low parry it, you can visually confirm the rest of the animation and just uh, parry the last hit instead. Alright, now thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you found the video uh, useful or informative in some way. Uh, hopefully you learned a thing or two. Uh, now, uh, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see that I haven't done before. Before you do that, maybe go check out my playlist on my channel. I have a playlist called uh, Guides and Tutorials for Tekken 8. Uh, so if you're looking for something sp specific, maybe it's in there already. If it's something I haven't done already, uh, well, give me a shout. I'll, uh, I'll take a look at it and maybe I'll make a video about it. But yeah, uh, until then, uh, I guess uh, have a good one. 